Hello, I'm Femi OK. Today on the stream, we will be joined by two Ugandan artists who spoke out against their government, were arrested, beaten, charged with communication offences, and eventually had to flee for their lives. I want to warn you that we'll be discussing and showing distressing images of torture. The main perpetrators of torture are the Uganda police and the army. However, even private individuals who put on civilian attire perpetrate torture. How much space is there in Uganda for critics of the government to be able to speak out? That is what we'll be looking at with the help of Kakwenza and Stella. Kakwenza, welcome to the stream. Please introduce yourself to our global audience. Tell them who you are and what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Femi. I am Kakwenza Rutsurabashaja, um, exiled novelist, stateless, unwanted citizen in Uganda. Right now I'm stateless. Uh, but being hosted by Germany. Good to have you here on the stream. Stella, nice to see you. I know you're keeping Kakwenza company because what he experienced, you know all too well. Please introduce yourself to our global audience. Right. Hi, Femi. Uh, my name is Stella Nyanzi. I'm delighted to be on the stream. I'm a woman, a mother, an exiled member of the Writers in Exile program of Penn Germany. I'm also a poet, I'm a dissident, I'm an opposition member who opposes the dictatorial regime of Yoweri Museveni, and uh, I'm a crass woman who speaks my mind freely. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to hearing more from you in just a moment. But first, let me tell you, if you're watching on YouTube, you can be part of this discussion as well. What do you want to ask a Quenza? What do you want to talk to Stella about? Comment section is right here join our discussion. Kakwenza, a, a couple of weeks ago, I was looking forward to hosting you on the stream and then that stopped because you hadn't got out of harm's way quite yet. For our audience who may not be familiar with your story, so that's anyone who's outside of Uganda perhaps, what happened? Why did you have to run away from your own country? Uh, I ran, I fled the country for my own health. I wanted to leave. And uh, Ukrainian government, Mr. Seven, using the magistrate, using uh, his bank role, as they were making life very hard for me. After torturing me, they refused me from uh, getting medical attention I wanted from abroad. Mm. They wanted me to attend the same uh, death traps. Uh, come hospitals, so I never wanted. I had to attend my own uh, medical facilities of my choice abroad. So they were saying no, and uh, for my life, I wanted to, you know, I want to live. Mm -hmm. So I decided to, you know, uh, flee the country and get medical attention abroad I wanted. I'm just looking here at Gilbert. Gilbert Balaku sent us this thought on Twitter, so I'm just going to show it to you. Stella, let me put this to you. Gilbert says, there is as much freedom of speech as you may need. The problem is freedom after speech. Thoughts, Stella? What can you say, right, what can so you not say in Uganda and get away with? I want to say that for those who praise the regime, those who are silent about the failures and the violations and the excesses of dictator Yoweri Museveni. The praise singers are free to sing their praise. But for those of us who are critical, those of us who condemn, those of us who refuse to silence ourselves in the face of injustices, those of us who cry for freedom and liberty, there is no freedom of speech in Uganda. And I think that Yoweri Museveni has created a facade of freedom of expression for those who will toe the line of respectability and diplomacy and will hail his regime. However, for those of us who undress him with our words and our speeches, those of us who show the limits that he has put Ugandans to, those of us who highlight the plight that Ugandans have to endure are silenced, we are not only silenced, we are also penalized and criminalized and pathologized. In my case, I was called mentally sick simply because I dared to speak consistently and persistently in all ways possible 
against Yoweri Museveni's dictatorship. And so to respond to that comment, I think there's freedom of speech for those who praise a failed dictator, a torturous, repressive, punitive dictator. There is no freedom of speech for those of us who are critical. And yet the times in Uganda demand that we continue to critique this dictator who is murderous. Kikwenza, some of what you've been charged with doing is um, the use of the language and also the people that you criticise. So it was the president and the president's son, uh, Tugume here says, do you believe that being vulgar is the way to obtain freedom? I, I, I want to unpack that word vulgar and what you actually said that made you ending, uh, ended up having to leave right. your country, right? Um, I am, I am uh, and Stella, I'm just going to say that we have young children watching as well, so do just you, <laughs> use, if you're going to use words, use the medical terms, all right? <laughs> Let's use the medical terms and everyone can look them up and they'll be fine. Um, yeah, go, go ahead. What, what is the vulgarity that Takume here on Twitter was talking about? Uh, when I use literature to describe my tormentors, to describe their character, to describe their impunity, it doesn't mean that I am uh, offensive or I am a vulgar. No. We must uh, learn how to use English words. If someone is a fool, we must tell them that they are fools. If they are obese, we must tell them that they are obese. Why should we hide? Why should we... Uh, uh, why should we be gagged in the name of vulgarities when uh, the, the most important things is to talk about the, the flagrant abusers of human rights? Often people describe the pen as being the sword. And uh, when I look at your writing, particularly when you're, you're using Twitter, I can, see, I can see the stabs that you're using here. So mm -hmm. on here, we've got uh, a post that you posted on March the 2nd. Museveni and his son's gargantuan appetite for human flesh and blood is incomparable to Amin's. Idi Amin has been pulverized and rendered a student, then professors of flagrant abuse of human rights. When you write this, do you know the, provoke, the provocation that you're going to make? Do you factor that into what it is you're going to say and how you say it? Do you have fear? I do not have fear because... First of all, the, the way they arrested me, illegal arrest, they took me to a military uh, detention. They beat me up. They mutilated me. They picked flesh from my thighs. If, if they are not cannibals, what were they going to do with the flesh they picked from my, my thighs? Did they eat the flesh? What did they do with the flesh? You know? What did they do with the flesh they picked from my thighs if they are not cannibals? So if... They pick fresh from my thighs. I should take it with equanimity. No, I have to tell them that they are cannibals. You know, I have to tell them they cannot uh, cook. They cannot cook me right, left, and center. And when I blow out the steam, they start saying that no, that is not acceptable. When you look, you know? uh, Kekwenza, we're looking at these pictures now. When you look at them now. What is going yes. through your head? I'm looking at them, and it's, it's, it's hard to think that as a writer, this is the punishment you should get for writing. It's hard for me, but well, it's you. That's your body. Those are your scars. The whole world should be asking what kind of person can do such a thing to a fellow human being. And that is Mohozi, Museven is the son who did that to me. You know? So which kind of person is that in this age and era of 21st century? We still have people who behave like uh, hyenas, hungry hyenas, cannibals. And they are uh, uh, teaming up to lead this country to become president. So I'm just, I'm just thinking back to something that the Minister of Information said, Stella, uh, about uh, Kakwenza's case. And this is what he said uh, just a little while ago. When Kakwenza said, and Kakwenza's lawyer said, this is, I, I've been tortured. Uh, and mm -hmm. this was the Minister of Information's response. Let's have a listen. This matter is being investigated by government within the security circles. But it's not true for him to say that people who are detained in Uganda 
are tortured. It is not true to say that there is no freedom of speech in Uganda. It is not true. Denial, and we saw the scars. So how did those scars happen? Stella, go ahead. Right, so I want to echo what Kakwenza said. Indeed, these are barbarians who are cannibals. They eat our flesh. In my case, I was detained as a prisoner at Luzira Women's Security, uh, Maximum Security Prison. My baby was tortured out of my womb in prison. Through my lawyers, I presented this case before um, the Uganda Human Rights Commission, before the lower grade magistrate, as well as before the high court. It is on the record. The Uganda Prison Services Medical Services are aware that my fetus was tortured out of my body by pro-regime prison wardresses, right? So when the Minister of Information, who we know is a sycophant of Yoweri Museveni, is a member of Yoweri Museveni's National Resistance Movement Party, denies blatant denial of the obvious. We know that the government does not work for the people. As I began, I say that there is favor and promotion and blessing of the regime for those who praise it, such as that liar of a minister, right? However, for those of us who are critical and speak about the plight and the oppression of Ugandans, there is punishment, there is criminalization. And I think for me, part of the sorry state of Uganda is that those who are mandated by our constitution and paid by our taxes every month they receive a salary to enforce and implement the laws of Uganda, the police, the security agencies, the military, and a number of paramilitary outfits who are using Ugandan public funds. Those are the very same people mm -hmm. who are brutalizing, torturing, and even murdering Ugandans. And I think following from Kakwenza's case, he is a remanded suspect. Mm -hmm. Following from my case, I was a suspect that was remanded in a detention facility. The police, the military, the security cannot be the judges. They cannot be the courts who are condemning and punishing us before we are found guilty. But even when a criminal has been found con guilty and convicted, prisons, detention facilities are supposed to be spaces of safe custody. Uganda has made it dangerous for any mm -hmm. political prisoner Currently, beyond the writers who are dissident writers such as myself are a number of opposition politicians, individuals and citizens as well who are nonpartisan, who refuse to toe the NRM line and refuse to yield their free will to dictator Museveni. These people too are tortured in detention facilities. And so when a right. minister goes on the record to deny, he's a blatant liar, and we must call him out for his lies. But he has to lie to ensure that his belly is fed, his belly is full. Mm. Let, me, let me just bring in um, Human Rights Watch, who are talking about the ways in which you are able to vocalise your criticism, and that potentially could be dangerous for you. Kakwenza, have a listen to this and then respond immediately off the back of the video, please. I think freedom of expression in Uganda has been restricted for a long time now, but I think what's different now with the internet is that people are able to criticize the government easily, and I think the authorities recognize that, um, and which is why we have crimes like offensive communication, which is so vaguely defined that people can be prosecuted for cracking jokes or posting memes or tweeting, as we're seeing with the case of Kakwenza Rukira Bashaija. Uh, <clears throat> the problem is that uh, Stella and I, we refuse to be co-opted, and we are paying for that. We've seen uh, opposition politicians who criticize M7, and they are called to the table. Their mouths are filled with cassava or food, and it ends from there. But Stella and I refuse to be co-opted, and we are forced out of the country. We are displaced. So... I really do not understand how I can criticize the government and 
they called me to the table and I joined them happily and I, uh, I stopped criticizing them. Some of us, we criticize the government genuinely. We do not criticize it because uh, we are desperate or we are hungry. We are looking for what to eat, you know. I was watching just recently an interview with President Museveni, and this interview was with the Voice of America uh, network. And President Museveni was very candid about there being torture in Uganda, but this is how he explained it. Have a listen, have a look. And then, Kikwenza, because your wounds are still healing, again, I would love you to respond to what your president said earlier. It's true that some of the people were tortured. Part of the problem of, of, of Africa is capacity building. We are building armies and security forces. These come with, sometimes they come with uh, traditional ideas from the village, or they get imported ideas from the, the, the former colonialists. It's very shameful that uh, Museven at his age uh, being in power for 36 years can still blame his uh, barbarism on colonialists. It is really shameful, very, very shameful. And he has used uh, torture, he has used uh, everything weird to consolidate the power for 36 years, and he's still oppressing us Ugandans and expects us to keep quiet. It is really shameful, and I really pity him. Sala, you were rolling your eyes, uh, face palming, during the president explaining uh, very carefully why there was torture in Uganda. Either it came from the village or it came from colonialists. And your response is what? Yoweri Museveni orders the military. Yoweri Museveni compromises the judiciary with orders about how the laws, bad laws such as the Computer Misuse Act, which the uh, comrade from Human Rights Watch referred to, to normalize violence and torture in Uganda. And so we shall not blame colonial or traditional or other sources before we name Yoweri Museveni, Muhozi Kainerugaba, Janet Kataha, and a whole battalion of Kada who lick their, or we're on children's t TV, I mean, it's, they're all ages watching, but people who, 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 who listen to these orders and act upon them because they're seeking favor from the president. Mm -hmm. Many others are seeking survival from the president. And so we have what we call order from above. And you can be sure that upon investigation, every order from the above, from above in the security services, in the police, even among paramilitary pseudo security outfits in Uganda, originates from either Yoweri Museveni, his wife Janet Kataha, or mm. his son Muhozi. And so, before Yoweri Museveni uh, really gets the blame to colonial and foreign and traditional. Uh, avenues, I think we name him. I name Museveni, the father of lies, the father of murder and torture, the father of barbarianism. Stella. And every sort of murder in Uganda. Yes, Stella, I'm just I thinking, name uh, were, were you ever planning to go back to Uganda any time soon? Because uh, I'm sure the Ugandan authorities are watching this show. What you Uganda say... Uganda is my homeland. Yeah. Uganda belongs to all of us. Yoweri Museveni and his family have made Uganda dangerous. Mm -hmm. Okay. One day, Yoweri Museveni is going to be out of Uganda. My parents' bones lie in Uganda in the brown soil of the earth in Masaka district. I will be buried with my grandfathers. I will be buried in my father's land. But I want my children to be alive when the liberation and the freedom that comes to Uganda comes. I do not want to be one of the dead victims murdered on the orders of Yoweri Museveni. And so I am a Ugandan. Uganda belongs to all of us who claim her as citizens, as residents, as nationals. Yoweri Museveni has endangered the lives of those of us who criticize his regime. I will come back to Uganda 
having healed my body of the trauma, having healed my mind of the trauma that I was exposed to, I have been silenced as a dissident who does not believe in the official policy of the country. However, one day I am returning to Uganda to continue contributing to the liberation struggle. I ensured I left so that I could get healing. I ensured I took my children out for their safety. Now that my children have a home, I am coming back to the battleground and All I'm right. going to continue contributing to the freedom fight in Uganda to ensure that your M7 lives and Uganda is safe for those of us who have dissident and alternative opinions. Dare I Uganda interrupt a poetess in us. full force? The only reason I'm doing it is for you, YouTube audience, so that you can ask questions. Stella, do excuse me. Um, I, I, I love to hear your prose. Okay, on YouTube right now, I have so many questions. I'm going to ask you to answer them as quickly as you can so we can get to as many thoughts as we can. Francis says, Kekwen, Kekwenza, this is for you. Is there a possibility that Ugandan Human Rights Commission will ever wake up and take charge of enforcing human rights in Uganda? Brief answer, please. Uh, when I was in prison, the Human Rights Commission, they uh, came, uh, Father Lokodo, the late, came and visited me in prison. I unaddressed, they saw whatever they did to me, the scars, my mutilated body. Uh, I was surprised that when they uh, went out there, they started saying that my alleged torture. Can you imagine saying that I was allegedly tortured? Mm. So it actually, I, I got so mad. I was like, which kind of commission is that that cannot be independent? Is it because they are sponsored by the state? I got so mad, so I cannot rely on Uganda Human Rights Commission. That is why I discontinued my relationship with them. Okay. And my lawyer is enough. He will do whatever it takes so that I get uh, justice. All right. This is from Shivance. Shivance wants to know what lessons do you hope the public will take away from both of your experiences? Stella, uh, we'll do yours first of all. And just very briefly, because I've got one more practical piece of advice that I would like you to give to fellow activists in Uganda. But Shivance, what are the takeaways? Kekwenza made headlines for weeks in Uganda. What are, what are the lessons learned? that the pen is mightier than the guns, that those we write against to expose are more fearful than we are. And I want to quickly say that the Uganda Human Rights Commission and every other public institution of uh, appeal are compromised in Uganda because we live under a dictatorship. And so, because Yoweri Museveni appoints and promotes and uh, even suspends and expels public officials, mm -hmm. the Uganda Human Rights Commission, the judiciary, the legislature, all the arms of government all right. are me, compromised. Let me just ask and this. So what lessons do we learn? Yeah. yeah let me... We learn that freedom of expression must be protected and can be protected even when it is dangerous. Okay. And I think we need to re-strategize how we play. All right, Stella, talking about, talking about danger, I think this expression. is really important because it's an activist, a young activist who's wondering about, and this is on Twitter, how can future activists avoid running into brutes? Kekwenza, this is so fresh for you. How do you avoid what happened to you? Is that possible if you want to speak out? Whatever happened to me is actually unavoidable. You cannot avoid it. Uh, as long as we still have the dictator in charge of the country and he's, uh, he has also infected his son with the barbarism and the son is uh, getting ready to take charge after the father, you cannot avoid it. You mm -hmm. speak out, they come and bludgeon you into capitulation or they okay. displace you to exile. So it is unavoidable. unavoidable. So what we need to do right now is uh, we need to organize and we send the dictator back. Okay. Until we do that, we are, no one is safe. No one will avoid the brute. Kekwenza and Stella, thank you for sharing your painful stories with us here on the stream. We really appreciate you making time. And thank you for your comments and questions on YouTube. Appreciate those. I will see you on the next edition of the stream. Take care, everybody.